This might be part of it, so but I figured you know we made it a topic where Nick would talk about it too. Because I know there was a topic that I want to talk about, but I think Nick's better equipped to talk about it as a prof- former professional football player. My rant is on Kim Mulkey, LSU coach Kim Mulkey. Kim Mulkey, the, just when you think she's as unlikable as it gets, she makes herself more unlikable. And I'm wondering at this point if she's if she's preparing to be in the WWE as a heel, if she wants to join the Rock at WrestleMania against Cody Rhodes. I don't know if you watch WWE at all, but I love WWE and I follow it. And The Rock and Cody Rhodes and the Bloodline and Roman Reigns, they're doing some hellified promo work with this. And yesterday, was it Monday, or The Rock beat, beat the brakes off of Cody Rhodes, or even caused blood. Um, so he must have cut himself. And then The Rock is cursing. We may have a resurgence of the, the part two of the Attitude Era coming back because this stuff is getting good. And I think Kim Mulkey might want to be in that crew with, with, with The Rock because she doesn't know when to shut the fuck up. Last week before, after, the, after their first round game, the day in, in the in-between day, she went on a rant of her own, a speech that she wrote to speak to the media because there's a reporter from the Washington Post named Kent Babb. Now, I have a degree in journalism. I have great respect for journalists. The reason that these sports are anyone's paying attention to them are because of journalists, television, that's broadcast journalism, newspapers, websites. All of this is pushing out these stories on these players. How do, how do you, Nick, as a former player, get known by anyone in your area if no one writes a story on you? If no one can see you on TV? That's what football used to look like in 1990 in high school. No one knew who most of these kids were. Women's basketball? Five years ago, you couldn't name me a player off of a freaking college women's basketball team that didn't play at UConn. Oh, I was about to say, Brianna Stewart. <laughs> well, UConn. <laughs> so, My bad got me. <laughs> so you got a situation when this woman comes off and she says that this guy gave her a ridiculous deadline that LSU and I could not possibly meet, and the reporter knew it. He sent her 12 questions and said he wanted answers by Thursday or whatever it was. And it was meant to distract them from the tournament. Unfortunately, this is a part of a pattern that goes back years. I told the reporter two years ago I didn't appreciate the hit job he wrote on Brian Kelly, the LSU football coach, and that's why I wasn't going to do an interview with him. This is exactly why people don't trust journalists and the media anymore. No, Kim Mulkey, you're not trusted. You have a history of shitting on your own people. You shit all over Brittany Griner. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, Brittany Griner did what she did and she went to, you know, when she was in Russian jail. And quite frankly, I think she should still be sitting in a Russian jail because we give up a prisoner of war to get her back. But you are her former coach. You've made her, you've made her feel uncomfortable about her sexuality as a, as a lesbian woman. I mean, th- there's, I mean, she's been done so many things involving sexual involving the lesbian community when she was at Baylor. I mean, she didn't care about COVID restrictions. I mean, this woman has, you know, and a lot of us didn't care as much, but she's a public figure and you got to be careful in what you say. This woman gives no fucks and she'll say what she wants to say. But at the same time, question the integrity of a journalist and sit here and say how it's meant to distract your team. Lady, You're the one that told everybody in a four-minute, because I watched it live, a four-minute press conference on a statement that you read about this guy. This this journalist has won three AP awards in 2013, 18, and 21. He's one of the nation's best sports writers. Nation's best. Even Stephen A. Smith did a thing on this a couple days ago. You put him off for two years. She said in, the, in, in, this, in this press conference that she has, he's been asking to interview, interview for her for two years. Two years. Do you know how much work goes into a two-year piece for a journalist? That's their whole life. And you're preventing them from doing their job because you refuse an interview. So guess what? 
Kim Mulkey. You got a deadline for 12 questions. And you're going to sit here and say that you couldn't possibly give an answer? Lady, he's been asking you for two fucking years. So screw you and your inability to make a deadline. Not to mention, this story hasn't even published. And she's sitting here threatening to sue the Washington Post and this writer, presuming and expecting a hatchet job or a hit piece, as she called it. A hit piece by an award-winning reporter? What does she think? He's, does she think he's a fucking blogger for some note from Bleacher Report or Barstool Sports? No. It's a professional writer. And she's hired the best defamation law firm. Guess what, lady? If what he says is true, you can hire God to, def to defend you. And you will lose. Because the fucking most basic component of defamation is a lie. If the person does not lie, it is not defamation. It's not libel. There's no, because libel is written. If it's not a lie, it is not defamation. So sorry you've done a lot of fucked up shit to former coaches, former players who will talk about your ass. And you know what? The more this woman talks, holy crap, the more I feel sorry for her players at LSU. The more I understand why they behave at times how they behave. Because they have a fucking coach who is the worst example as an adult for college kids. Well, maybe next to Dion. <laughs> maybe next to Dion. Dion and Mulkey can hang out together. Because that example that she shows to these young women with that type of bogus ass speech and sitting here screaming about being distracted, lady, you're the one distracting everybody. No one knew about this. Nobody cared. And you're afraid that when this pop thing pops, it's going to fucking embarrass you. And all of it will be true. And now I cannot wait till this article comes out. Because I, as soon as it comes out, I'm going to read the whole damn thing. This will be <laughs> beautiful. I mean, every, because of her, now everyone's going to read it. Everyone's going to read it. She needs to learn to shut the fuck up. She, she can't hasn't done help herself. What? She hasn't done it all yet. She can't help herself. She cannot help herself. She calls sleazy tactics, tactics hatchet jobs, fed up. I'm going to, I mean, attack this university, this awesome team of young, they're not attacking the women. It's about you. And you don't even know what it was about. Other than the fact that former players have reached out to you to tell you that they could be anonymous. Because the reality is most people won't talk about you if they're not anonymous. It's because you hold power in this game still. But I can only imagine what some of those former players and former coaches that you've worked with think of you. That you're so afraid that you came out with this garbage and hired the best defamation lawyers in the country. Big fucking deal. I cannot wait to read it. And Kim Mulkey, who do they play next? Um, I don't even I'm not sure. We all, I just know that. that oh, no, they, they play UCLA next. They, they might lose win. that game. They might, they UCLA's good. They might lose that game. They might win that game. But let me tell you something. If they lose, the distractions that were created were created by her, not by some writer, not some, from an award-winning writer at the Washington Post. That's all I got. You got any opinion on that, Nick? You no, didn't no, argue no. with me on stuff like this. So. No, 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 no. I, I, I can't even say nothing because she doesn't, she doesn't show her trap. She just talks her way into every situation that fucks up it for her team. Like the whole, you know, Angel Reese thing the other day with Cardosa. Like like why why are you adding things on in that in that way just for your team? We know that you're trying to trying to say, Oh, my team is gritty, we're gonna fight, you know, we're trying to have a no back down attitude to USC. Well, South Carolina, we know I'm talking about South Carolina. You know, we're trying to have a no back down attitude towards them, so you're trying to push it in a way that that makes the team tough, you know, and have your team not back down and be ready to play that game again when it do come up. So we're not scared, even though you lost to them 
15, 16 times in a row. You know, so she's trying to instill that attitude to her team. But when it comes to the other lines that she crosses, she don't have to, but she does it anyway. I mean, I kind of feel like she is the Donald Trump of women's basketball. Yeah. Kim Mocha Trump. That's what we're going to call her. Oh, all I, right. promise, I promise our viewers and listeners that we wouldn't get political ever on this show. But um, that I was... I like them or not, I just said. <laughs> oh, my God. On that note, thank you, Rudy. We appreciate you. I actually <laughs> love that take. I'm, I've been very shocked by some of the comments she's made. With that being said, we're going to go right into the most exciting part of the show, according to myself. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.